I had that, you know, that amazing gig, you know, while Cheers uh, drinking beer, you know, I, I, I mean, really, like, uh, this is my job. I, I have to look like a guy who fit, wants to drink beer. I'm like, yeah, I'm a lifetime of research uh, in, the, in the making of that role. Then I get this other gig on Saturday Night Live as a guy who, like, roots for the Bears and the Bulls and, and drinks beer and eats ribs and Polish sausage. It was like, it was seriously, I mean, you know, you I have lucky. been very, very, very lucky. Okay, and not only that, if I may say, you've been married to the same woman for 30 years. Yay. How rare is that? 36 years, 30. two days ago. But you know, in terms of uh, luck, at, uh, luck with jobs, the best is John Ratzenberger. Um, <laughs> when he was auditioning for Cheers, he uh, was auditioning for the same role as me, and he, uh, he felt like it wasn't going well. So uh, he was literally, they're like, well, thank you very much, and he's like, thank you, and he's walking out the door, and he has one <laughs> foot literally out the door. Wow. He pops his head back in and says, do you have a bar know-it-all? And uh, they go, no, no, what do you mean? And he started improvising as uh, this Cliff Clavin character. And uh, they started laughing, and they wrote him into the show. Wow. But so there's know, chutzpah and luck. I, and talent, though, to be able to seek that right at the moment and jump in. So John Ratzberger was Cliff, Cliffy, on uh, Cheers. And he kind of worked his way into the script. That also says Die Hard. He really wanted it. He didn't want to leave that place without something. There used to be... Uh, 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 well, there still is uh, one of the precepts of uh, improvisation uh, from uh, the late uh, Del Close, uh, our director at Second City, was uh, follow the fear. Uh, and that's an interesting concept for improvisation technique. But I would say follow the fun. Yes. And that's what I always tell people uh, who ask me, like, you know, what, uh, how do you... Do you have any advice for somebody starting out in entertainment or acting? And, and I just say, have fun. Have fun with every single bit of it. Have fun with the work. Have fun with the not working. Have fun with the search for work. Yeah. Have fun with the auditions. Go in there. They're, they're your audience. It's, uh, you know, it's 175 people in a tent in, in Grant Park. It's, it's two people in a room, a casting yep. director yes, right. and, a, and, a, and a producer or a director or something, and, and they're your audience. Yes. Do what you do. Knock it out of the park. Yes. Have fun. Um, have fun with the entire... And all your friends bond with all your, you know, your like-minded fellow traveler, young aspiring actors and writers and... Uh, and uh, have a ball, because if you're not having fun, the hell with it all, exactly. really. Uh, it's just way, yes. way, way too yes. hard. So over the years of all your drunken endeavors, any one story that stands out? Oh, uh, they're so awful and evil. Um, <laughs> I don't know. You know, like when I was uh, 16, I, uh, I, I grew up uh, on the south side of Chicago, and um, uh, we've... <laughs> There was this hangout at 99th and Western called Jansen's. And uh, it was a high school hangout, like, you know, imagine American graffiti. And uh, so one day we walked, uh, me and my friend Terry, and I was a late bloomer at 16. You know, I was, I was not a, a mature man by any means. Um, and Terry, my friend Terry, looked like he was 12. <laughs> and uh, we walked uh, down Western Avenue, which is famous for the Southside Irish Parade. Yes, yes. And uh, so it's bar after bar after bar after bar. So the first one was a place called Littleton's, uh, less than a, a half a block from uh, this high school hangout. And um, we walked in, sheepishly peaked, you know, it was very dark. We're good, good. Um, Oddly dark, you know? And we're like, oh, this kind of works for us. Very empty. Uh, two old geezers, you know, and at the end of the bar looked at us like, you scumbags, get out of here. And, uh, and this guy behind the bar, and so we uh, put on our deepest voice, uh, 
Yeah, uh, we'd like uh, two, uh, two drafts, please. <laughs> and the guy goes, ah, coming right up. Day, dee, day, dee, day, day, dee, day. And, um, he's, and he pulls us a couple of drafts, and we put the money there, and he's, and uh, about halfway through our first beer, I realized something. I said, Terry, this guy, this bartender is blind. <laughs> and, and, he, and he goes, Are you, what? I think he's blind. And we're, yeah, it is awfully dark in here. It's weird. And, and sure enough, um, we had found a bar like 75 feet from like the high school hangout with a blind bartender. And, we're, and so we're sitting there drinking. How lucky can you get? <laughs> we're sitting there drinking and the, you know, the two geezers are still you scumbags. And uh, we're like, uh, not a word to anybody. <laughs> shut the, you know, shut up. Not do, because this, if this gets out, you know, it's going to, well, like three days later, there was like a 150 kids in this bar. I, I think they put a bicycle rack out in front of the bar. It was like, 